This evening, we are joining together to celebrate and recognise the outstanding work that you are all doing, but also to reflect on the past year, the challenges that we've all faced and those that have died. Just a few housekeeping notes before we start. So the ceremony will last for around one hour. So please do stay until the end and celebrate all the winners with us. It's also being recorded and it will be available to watch on YouTube in a few days time. Just a reminder that PCPLD Network is a registered charity. We are a very small charity and we don't have a regular source of income. So we do rely on donations. So please do consider donating and you can do this at any point by texting PCPLD, followed by the amount, and this can be as, as, as low as a pound, to 70085. I'm delighted now to hand over to Two of our presenters, hopefully, if we can get Nikki on. So we have Irena Tofrivine with us, who is chair of the Linda McKennell Awards Judging Panel, and she's also one of our trustees. And we've also got BBC News and Watchdog presenter Nikki Fox. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Gemma. And I'm Irena Tofrivine. As Gemma said, I chair um, the judging panel of Linda McNeil Award and have done so since 2008 when it was first, um, you know, first started. It's a huge honour and a pleasure to welcome you all. It's such, a, it's such an honour to read all those nominations and it's going to be an amazing evening because you've all done such amazing things in this past year. But before we do that, um, I want to really acknowledge that this, yes, this is an evening of celebration. We want to celebrate all the wonderful things that you've done, the great support you've given to the people you've loved. But it's also an, an evening of sadness, really, because many of you will be remembering people who have died. Many people have died during the pandemic. So I'm inviting you to find yourself um, a candle, or as I've done here, or a flower or a photograph or something that reminds you um, that helps us remember the people who've died. I'm going to light that candle and then we're going to start the evening with just one minute silence and really think about all the people in whose honour this award really is, the people who've died. Thank you very much. I'm going to keep my candle on this evening. So let's start with them um, with the award ceremony. It's there's a short film. It's, I'm going to start with showing you um, a little bit about the history of the Linda McEnhill Award, um, why it was started, why it's called the Linda McEnhill Award, some of the previous winners and some of the judges. So Anastasia, if you can just give us that first film. Let's just watch that. The Linda McEnhill Award is really, really, really important because um, it highlights the the staff who work with people with learning disabilities who are um, 
are approaching um, death. Hello, I'm Linda McInhill, currently Chief Executive of Argyll Hospice in Greenock in Scotland. Why the award? Well, back in 1997, Will Blackman, and now Chief Executive of Respond, and I heard about the wonderful work that was being done by Northgate Hospital and the St Oswald's Hospice team in creating the first ever dedicated palliative care beds for people with Lyme disabilities. A short time later, we heard about the work of the Chesterfield team at Ashgate, who were using Snoozlin to support pain and symptom management in people with Lyme disabilities at the end of life. We were delighted to go and meet both of these teams, but very surprised to hear that neither of them knew about each other. And so the idea and the dream of the network was born and we launched in 1998, initially to overcome practitioner isolation, to ensure there was no duplication of effort and resource when trying to come up with innovative approaches and to celebrate and cascade the best practice that was being developed by those practitioners. I gave up chairing the network and so the Linda McInhill Award was created and I'm very proud to say that I was the first holder of that award. Who could have believed 14 years later just how much the network would have grown and developed Being highly commended for the Linda McInhill Award was amazing. I was working at a hospice at the time in London as a social worker and we started a project to essentially widen access to the hospice for people with learning disabilities and life limiting illnesses. But I think winning the award, of course, for the whole hospice team, they were absolutely thrilled, gave great satisfaction, shone a spotlight on the importance of the work, and helped us to secure funding from our local CCG to continue rolling out our training programme for another two years. It was a great honour for us to receive the award. What we felt we were doing was in our usual job. We didn't feel we were doing anything over the top, anything that warranted an award, but it was fantastic for the service and fantastic for the nurses involved to have that accolade and, and to really have that um, approval. Uh, what we were doing was innovative and creative and different. My name's Jean Wilson um, and I'm going to tell you uh, about Victoria and the most amazing woman and how she died. We knew Victoria was dying, so we had time to prepare a good death for her in her own home, surrounded by people she loved and people who loved her. The staff team, her medics and her family worked hard to give her a good end to her life and I wanted to share this with the world. Therefore, I entered the Linda McKennell Outstanding End of Life Team Award in 2014, and we won. Putting into words how we all work together, giving Victoria a majestic death in my application for the award proved to be very therapeutic for me and helped with my loss and subsequent mourning. Her staff and palliative teams and all the many people, including her family and friends, particularly those with learning disabilities, receiving the, the award was, for many, a pivotal point in their lives. Being recognised for their exceptional and highly valued part as a team player in Victoria's life and death helped with their own pain in losing a much-loved woman. The award given to Centre 404, the Ellipse Palliative Team, Islington Social Services and Health, led them to introduce Victoria's model of end of life across their services. 
it has opened a forum for talking about and planning death for many people. For people with learning disabilities in Islington and across the UK, the description of how we work successfully together has provided them with a model of excellent practice. And I hear often, we want to go out like Victoria. Applying and receiving the award as her mum has helped me with my healing process. And even in death, Victoria will be remembered. I was a judge on the Linda McEnhill Award as well for several years and reading the nominations is so inspiring and emotional um, and, and you know I think really shows the incredible, incredible work that goes on across the whole of the UK to support people with learning disabilities at the end of life. And we don't often get to hear those stories. We don't often get to hear those pockets, about those pockets of good practice, great practice, inspirational practice. But the Linda McEnhill Award does that. It helps to share those stories and share that great practice so then others can adopt it and change the way they work so it spreads keep spreading the word pcpld network you're doing an incredible incredible job and it makes me feel so proud so and i've been on the judging panel for uh 10 years uh and it's been really really good um doing that uh, and year by year, the applications get more difficult. When, um, when we hear the stories uh, of the staff um, who are working with people, um, it brings tears to your eyes, um, you know, because they're um, really, um, really fantastic um, work they're doing. Um, and it's a shame we can't, we can't give an award for all of them, uh, but we can't, um, so we have to pick out the best, but that's what's getting hard, picking out the best because they're so fantastic. Uh, and we've seen some wonderful applications. So from one award winner to another, um, congratulations and all the best and keep on doing the fantastic work you're doing. Thank you. And I hear the nominations are phenomenal representations of all the work our sectors have undertaken to support people with learning disabilities at some of the most complex times of their life. So I wish all of you the very best. Congratulations to all of those of you who have been nominated. And those of you today will become, like me, a very proud recipient of the Linda McEnhill Award. Thank you. The nominations this year have been extraordinary. It's been an extraordinary year and supporting people with learning disabilities at the end of life and in bereavement is difficult at the best of times and this as we all know has been the worst of times so we wanted to recognize that in the nominations in, in the in the awards this year how difficult this year has been we were profoundly moved by the nominations we've received because it shows just how many of you had to go right out of your comfort zone um, and to, to support the people that you've loved. And I, again, can't stress enough how much we recognise that you support workers, family, whether you're professionals or friends, we are talking about people that you have loved and that you have supported. And it's been, it can be quite hard to write those nominations, so we really, really appreciate that you for sending those nominations in. Thank you for that and sharing with us um, your stories. 
So we had a really difficult job. Um, as Pat said, all the nominations or nominees that have been invited along this evening, all of you who've been nominated and have been asked to come along, deserve recognition. And we've put you on the long list. We can't call it a short list because the list is quite long. Um, we received 18 nominations that we've long listed for this award because we thought actually all of you have done an amazing job and we want to share that with the world and it needs to be recognised. As Pat said, we can't give this award to everyone, um, however much we'd like to, but we just would like to share with you and show you some of the amazing things that, that the nominate, nominees have done and the wonderful nominations that we've received. Maybe we can just look at those before we announce um, who of those have won the award or who of the, all the nominees have won the award. Hello everyone, I'm Sara Spinetti, I'm the Head of Operations for Centre 404. We are a charity that supports people with learning disabilities and their families in London. I'm here today because I have nominated our fantastic team at Kendall House for the support they have offered to Daniel, one of our service users that sadly passed away last year. Daniel was supported, I believe, in the most wonderful way by the team. They really took the time to get to know him, to understand his wishes and made sure that they were respected until the very last minute. Daniel had a very peaceful, calm and beautiful death in his house, surrounded by the people that loved him the most. So I really believe that the team deserves this award and uh, well done, Kendall House team. Heather House is a world-leading specialist care home that supports people with juvenile Batten disease and other complex conditions. Robert was diagnosed with juvenile Batten disease when he was 24. His parents heard about Heather House and the amazing support that they could offer. There is arts and crafts, music, gardens, relaxation and an indoor pool to help people with their mobility. Robert's parents had been told by doctors that their son would not live for very long. However, he had seven wonderful years living at Heather House. When he became very unwell, his parents came to stay with him at his home. After 10 days, their son passed away peacefully. After a while, they sent a letter to Heather House to thank them for the support that they provided for their son. Staying with Robert for those 10 days allowed his family to realise just how much everyone cared. The team were like a second family and his last days were filled with love and laughter. Hello, I'm Louise, nurse from the Rosemary Foundation Hospice at Home team. These are my colleagues Maddie and Claire. We have nominated Moss Cottage of Community Integrated Care for the outstanding level of support they provided to their service user in their end of life experience. Maddie's just going to say a few words now about how well they provided that support for. They, they provided 24 seven support for the service user and was very tuned in to all of her needs and requirements during end of life. They were also very good at ringing us should they have any worries, concerns for support to make the service users final days very comfortable and feeling well cared and loved. They also acted as um, a go-between with all the healthcare professionals involved, there was community nurses, our own team, and also as um, a go-between for family and updating them yeah. as well. Mm. Which I think gave them confidence to be able to take this service user through her final days. But also we'd like to say how courageous they were in embracing that. And that they thought they put the service user first and that they did a remarkable job 
looking after her and and uh, we would love to nominate them for this award which they they richly deserve really thank you My name's Amy and I'm Registered Manager at Tresida House in Truro, where we are passionate about end-of-life care. As a team, we are committed to providing an excellent quality of care, providing opportunity and person-centred support. We feel that this approach is just as important at a person's end of life, once they have passed and furthermore during the funeral planning process. Now let me tell you about Debbie and the amazing support my team provided during her end of life. Debbie moved into Tresida in 1987. She was unbelievably loved by her family, friends and those who supported her. She was loving, caring, incredibly cheeky. She was Queen Bee, ruling the roost right up to the very end. Debbie was diagnosed with dementia in 2008. Even with her complex needs, staff managed to support her on local holidays and trips to enhance her quality of life. Five months before Debbie died, staff transformed her bedroom to ensure she had a peaceful and comfortable environment where she could rest. Debbie had twice weekly full body massages from a wonderful therapist to ensure she was relaxed and comfortable. My team went above and beyond for Debbie, offering a level of support that goes beyond care. She was visited by all of her family and friends who shared stories, reminisced and sang her favourite songs, including ABBA. I'm unbelievably proud of my team and what they have achieved, and that's why I think they deserve this award. Hello, I'm Sean. And I'm Phil. We are colleagues of the team at Wandella. We feel that this team deserves the recognition due to them, all going above and beyond their job responsibilities to support John and advocate for him for the last three months of his life while in hospital. The team put their own lives on hold to be there for John so he had familiar faces around him. Even more so when they knew he was coming to the end of his life. The team fought to get extra hours so that he could be with John 24-7. This had a tremendous impact on the team supporting Sheer and Chris back home. Yeah having to reassure Chris, who had lived with John for over 29 years. The team put together to make sure both Sheer and Chris's support needs were met during this stressful time. The team were also dealing with the fact that we were going through the fear and restrictions of COVID-19 and did not think twice about giving up their time to be with the people we support. We feel, as colleagues, they truly deserve this award for their dedication during that very difficult time. supported Davinia impressed me from the first time I visited the house and their support to Davinia in her final days inspired me to make this nomination. They approached the care um, very professionally and very caring and they always went that extra little bit to uh, make her comfortable, look after her, keep her entertained. They came in and sat with Davinia overnight even when they weren't working. People who were on annual leave made sure that they were there when needed. I felt very well informed. I was involved all the way through uh, Davinia's care. The staff here uh, always keep you in the loop and uh, very well informed as well. And the decisions were made as a group and not uh, imposed on us and they were more than uh, happy for her to spend her final days in her home because this was her home. This team learned and adapted every day to make sure Davinia was comfortable and happy. The staff here have always gone above and beyond what's required of them. Um, they spend a lot of time and towards the end they were coming in in their own time. Virtually everybody in the team was there, talking to Davinia, laughing around the bed at a joke, singing a favourite song and supporting each other and her and her family. Um, when it wasn't even required of them, they've always been gone that extra little mile to make everything as perfect as could be.
I think you'll agree some amazing things have happened up and down the country during this lockdown year. So congratulations to all the nom people who've been nominated, all the teams. Um, it, you've, you're all wonderful. We considered them all very carefully, all the nominations. They were in an, across a range of d different categories. And we recognised that there are different aspects to supporting people with learning disabilities at the end of life and in bereavement. So we have decided that um, we will give a three additional awards, Linda McInhill Awards, in addition to the main one, um, all of which we'll be absolutely delighted to showcase as outstanding. But before we announce those, we want to give one other award this evening. Um, and that is one that we haven't given before. We've called this, this the, the One to Watch Award. The One to Watch Award this year has gone to James Channon and Simon Cox at St Giles Hospice in Lichfield, who was nominated by Ian Leach. James and Simon both have learning disabilities and they took a lead role in developing and delivering a hospice staff training programme. And we have been a part of the Bravement Project for St Giles. How did you help with the project? Did you help with the information? Oh, yeah, the information, yeah, to make the information easier and give our expert opinion. Did you enjoy helping on the yes, project? Yes, yes, yes. Um, what did you enjoy about it? We enjoyed meeting new people. Was it fun? Yes, it was. Yes. Why do you think St Giles asked for your help? Because we're the experts in learning disability. Oh, at least we pretend to be the experts. So guys, why do you think you should win this award? Because we're the experts. And we've done a lot for society, especially around the Lichfield area. And, and they obviously think, well, they do deserve an award of all what we've been doing. And we've worked really hard. And on behalf of Friends to Friends, we'd like to say we're very proud of all the hard work you've put into the project. Thank, oh, you. thank you. No, thank you. Well done, James and Simon. Many, many congratulations and keep doing the wonderful things that you're doing. Let me just say a little bit more about James and Simon then, because we felt that it was really important that people with learning disabilities are involved in training staff and and um, you know in developing the workforce really in in this in this area. It's a one to watch because it's early days for you both for doing do, doing this kind of work. So we are really interested and keen to see what it is um, that you are going to do next. So um, good luck to you all and uh, keep in touch. Actually, that would be that would be great. So, cheering you both on, James and Simon, let's move on to the next um, three, just three new categories, as I said, for the Linda McInhill Award. And those are um, bereavement support, people giving outstanding support to people with learning disabilities who have been bereaved, inspirational individuals and unsung heroes. So the outstanding bereavement support award um, goes to the Dell House team at the Lantern community in Ringwood in Hampshire. They were nominated by Berger Lydiard. The Lantern community supporting end of life care planning. Staff supported people to think about someone they knew and who had died. We asked, how might people wish to remember their own lives? We created plans for every person their own, helping us to know how each person would like to be supported at the end of their lives. When one of the people here 
died last autumn. Staff knew how he wanted to be remembered. We knew of his love for the flying Scotsman and that art classes were his favourite. And we had learned to remember him together. In song with our staff choir. And to celebrate his life, how he wanted it to be celebrated. We learned together to care about the end of lives. So congratulations to the Lantern community. We were really impressed by how bereavement support has be had become embedded within the Lantern community, within this organization. It wasn't just a one-off. And, and being open about death and dying and bereavement and finding creative ways of sharing bereavement together is helping everyone in this organization, including the staff. And in their nomination, they wrote, and I'm just going to read this out, People with learning disabilities who have died are making differences to all of our lives. We are learning to celebrate people's lives and to allow them to affect us in ways that change us for the better and bring out the best in us. So very many congratulations to the Lantern community, um, a very well deserved winner of the Bereavement Support Award. Okay, so you are just in time actually to announce um, the next category which is inspirational individuals the the next oh, is the linda mckenna award category is inspirational individuals so that award goes to liam canfield mental health student nurse at swansea university and that was nominated by emma jane edwards Hi, I'm Sarah Tate and I'm a senior mental health nurse lecturer at Swansea University. I'm Liam Canfield's academic mentor and I've been proud to be his academic mentor since he started his mental health nurse training in September 2018. Um, I'm so proud of Liam and all of his achievements and he is so well deserved of this, of being a nominee for the Lyndon McGurnell Awards. Um, he's an excellent nurse. Um, he's passionate about nursing, about mental health nursing and learning disability nursing. Um, and if he ever did have to nurse any of my family, friends or anything, I would be so confident and um, extremely happy if he was one of those nurses. Um, good luck, Liam. Hello, my name is Emma Jane Edwards and I am a community nurse in the Swansea Learning Disability Team. I've had the absolute pleasure of mentoring Liam Canfield during his nurse training. He has not only shown dedication to the people who we look after, but he's shown kindness, strength and leadership skills. He is very, very deserving of this award. And I am very happy that I've had the opportunity to work alongside him. Good luck, Liam, not that you need it. You are one in a million. Well done, Liam, for being nominated for this award. It comes at no surprise. The support that you gave myself and my team looking after someone at the end of their life was absolutely outstanding with the health facilitation that you did to make sure that they were so comfortable. And you always kept their spirits up every time you were around them. And not just them, the people that were looking after them as well. You kept us laughing you kept us positive at a difficult time. So if anybody deserves this award, you do. Now the judge is recognised an extraordinary student nurse to have the courage as the student to push for proper investigations and to question doctors and to offer sensitive support to carers at such a difficult time is so inspirational. Now one judge, summed it up like this saying this is not about being senior or expert but about humanity and willingness to treat people as individuals and challenge others to do better so congratulations well done honestly it's just brilliant
And I'm just going to butt in here, Nikki, because I have just picked up, I think it was on Twitter, that Liam, um, that you've, um, you're now a qualified nurse. You're no longer a student nurse. I think you qualified last uh, this, this month, and I see that it's been, been first class honours. So many congratulations. I've also read that you are interested, even though you're a mental health nurse, even though you're a mental health nurse, to um, continue working in the field of learning disability. Please do, and please join us. You'd be very welcome. So congratulations. Nikki, I'm handing back over to you now. Honestly, brilliant. Well done. Um, OK, so our next Linda McKenna Award uh, uh, category is the Unsung Heroes Award. Now, this group, drum roll, the Beaux-Sajour Care Team, an independent care home for 10 people with learning disabilities based in St Albans, Hertfordshire, and they were nominated by Louise Jenkins. My name is Nish, and this is my colleague Sheila. We're the management team of both social care services in St Albans. In November last year, our home was hit by the fast-moving variant of COVID, despite taking every caution possible. In the space of 48 hours, the majority of our staff had tested positive, as well as our service users. Although the outbreak was spreading fast, our staff team was phenomenal, and those committed agreed to work additional shifts until the service users were temporarily moved. We were very lucky to have five staff who did not test positive and they held down the fort at Borsa Jour with outside staffing until it was no longer feasible. The next staff even volunteered their services. Nish and I have worked tirelessly with Hertfordshire over the first 48 hours, whom we were at our most worst, and over the next two weeks to ensure a smooth, swift, safe transition took place. Painfully, there was no other option but to temporarily move the services for the first time in 25 years. Our services were moved to Bundington, which was heart for us, and for them, as the majority of them had lived at both job for 25 years. Sadly, one of our services succumbed to COVID, and this was devastating to the team. We tried everything to ensure that he knew he wasn't alone, and many of the staff had video calls with him to know that he wasn't alone at this time, and he hadn't been abandoned by us. Despite being very unwell, the majority of the staff were able, throughout their isolation, to have daily meetings and calls and check-ins with us, the local authority and the other care home. This was to provide the service users with reassurance, which would have ultimately been such a traumatic time for them. We have very kindly been nominated for this award in regards to our um, efforts during COVID. We really hope that this award will also give recognition to all the other brave care staff and frontline workers who have worked tirelessly and most importantly give recognition to all those who have passed away and the memories that us frontline workers hold of them. Thank you for your recognition. Thank you. Honestly, that's so incredible. I mean, you know, we know how difficult a year it was last year. And in November 2020, it was within just a space of a week, all 10 residents and 17 out of the 22 staff members at the Beaujolais got um, diagnosed as COVID positive. And the response of the staff was just so extraordinary. Um, and I mean, in the darkest time, like, oh, you know, we see these brilliant people doing amazing things. And this is just one example of that. Um, I think, you know, from what I, I heard from Arena, all the residents had to move out into a special COVID unit and the staff were making sure that someone was on call 24-7 and you provided support plans, dealt with all the hospital administrations. And obviously, sadly, one um, resident did die, which is just horrific. Um, and nine returned. But but you all got through it. So it's just incredible how you all worked together and survived. Yeah. Thank you. And I just want to echo that, Nikki. It's, it's, it's amazing what you've done. And I think Unsung Heroes sums it up. I mean, this is just extraordinary what you've done. And we don't often hear those kind of stories of all these wonderful things, you know, how hard you've tried and, and made things as, as good as it could be in these horrific circumstances. So. This is an award for you, both as your team, but also, as you quite rightly said in the video, for all those unsung heroes yeah. across the country who have done this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, well done and congratulations. So, let's move on to the final category, and that's the one that we received most nominations for, 
that's providing outstanding end of life care and support to a person. Um, this is this category is all about, about people. And if you've already seen in the videos we showed earlier, um, that, that is really quite profoundly affecting because it's somebody that you've supported, you know, who you really, really cared about. So we've had an, quite a few nominations in this category. We've decided to award two highly commended awards and one winner. And I'm handing back over to Nikki to announce who those highly commended are first and who the overall winner is of this award. The first team who have received a highly commended award are the Shandon staff team from Achieve Together in Surrey, nominated by Erin Wheatland. Now they supported Beverly who sadly died earlier this year in 2021. This team didn't send in a video, but it's really a wonderful. Um, maybe you want to say a little bit more about Nikki, about why we thought this were highly commended. The judges thought that the uh, Shannon staff team provided exceptional support to Bev in really difficult circumstances during COVID. They used through the difficulties. They spotted early symptoms, advocated, they took action, supported Beverly and her family. And the judges loved the way Bev's hospital room was transformed into her home bedroom, which yeah, just things like that making such a difference. Now, one of the nurses on the ward where Claire died commented how beautiful Beverly's final days were. Um, she said she'd never seen someone who was so genuinely loved and cared for by so many committed staff. So congratulations. Heartbreaking, but congratulations. Now, the second team, I got too carried away in my emotions and I just... It's, it's a very, Irena warned me this would be quite emotional. <laughs> uh, now, the second team who have received a highly commended award are Dolphin Court from the Royal Men Cap Society in Haven, uh, Haven, sorry, Hampshire, nominated by Angeline Scott Ralphs. They supported CJ, who sadly died in 2020. Okay. We feel proud as a team working for Maincap, having the privilege of supporting this lovely lady, not only through her life's journey, but also through her end of life care. As a fairly new team who had no previous experience of supporting people with end of life care, we approach this new challenge with positivity, empathy and dedication. Appreciation showed to the team after the dignified and peaceful passing mm. Of CJ from family and other healthcare professionals was heartfelt. We feel honoured to have been nominated for this award, not only on our behalf, but also on behalf of CJ and her family. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Now, the staff at Dolphin Court, they had to cope with difficult lockdown circumstances when CJ was ill and dying. And the judges recognised how inexperienced the staff were, but yet they tried and they did such a fantastic job. So one of the judges mentioned that, that this, how inspirational it was. They said that the care staff had not had to um, support anybody at the, end of the life, at the end of life previously, but they will now have the confidence to do so. So well done to everybody at Dolphin Court. Cool. Well done. And I'm just going to butt in, thanks Nikki, I'm going to butt now. in there, how, how much we recognise that this is a really difficult thing to do for staff who haven't done this before in these homes and you are up and down the country, you are working with people, many of you have never had to support somebody who's dying before and it's hard, you know, it's really difficult on so many different levels. So really well done because you know it was clear from the nominations that you have done an excellent job and that you gained confidence through it and but also hopefully the satisfaction that you've given in this case um you know, the person cj but bev as well in in shandon um the shandon team the best possible end to life so very many congratulations 
And I'm now going to hand back to uh, Nikki to announce the, the winner of this category. The winner of the category of prof uh, providing outstanding end of life care. Are we ready? The winner is Stuart Hassler's Circle of Support in Enfield and North London. This includes professionals from North Middlesex Hospital, Enfield Integrated Learning Disability Service, the Community Respiratory Team, Rapid Response Nurses, North London Hospice Palliative Care, as well as Stuart's personal assistants, Evandale Care and Stuart's family. So here's what the guys have won. Twenty-six different professionals were involved from 15 disciplines. Together, we made it easy. The lead physician for learning disabilities was instrumental in Stuart being discharged. She understood he hated being in hospital and involved the right people to get him home. We had a multi-professional group email and WhatsApp group for 24-hour support. His visits from professionals were spaced out so that he didn't feel overwhelmed. He decided who should visit and when. Whenever the nurses visited Stuart, they always made sure we were okay. They even called on their day off sometimes. Stuart's carers were trained in person-centred care, so they knew each other well and helped him update his own PCP. Even in the pandemic, Stuart was able to spend time with his family every day, either through COVID secure visits or online. Stuart has been planning his end of life care for two years. He even told us the horses had to be white, not black. We made sure every details of his plan was followed. Stuart had a very challenging behaviour and because of how and what the Eden Vale did for him, we were able to spend the last precious weeks of his life as a family. These times we would never have had without them. He himself told me that he was so happy they were there for him. To see him comfortable, relaxed and happy with them meant everything. They were even there for us. Thank you. Oh, you know, he will help me. Judges were blown away by Stuart's story and it's clear that Stuart himself did take charge of how he wanted his end of life to be and he was very much at the heart of that in a way that's rarely seen before really but that was only possible if there is an that is only possible if there's an outstanding support around him and as you've just seen there his circle of support was huge and committed there were so many parts of Stuart's support that impressed the judges for example they set up a secure with the entire circle of support so that important information could be shared immediately, even out of hours. Or when the funeral directors had told Stuart that he would face additional charges due to his size, Stuart was so worried he was supported to set up a GoFundMe page to cover funeral costs and raise, <laughs> and raise so much money that after he died that the funeral was paid for, they could make a £3,000 donation to his chosen charity. He was also supported to record a video to say goodbye to everyone who knew him. The way Stuart was supported to take complete control of his life and death needed courage and exceptional team working. And the judges were unanimous in holding Stuart's of support as one of the examples of the outstanding end of life support that they've ever seen. Congratulations. Very many congratulations. I want to echo that. And Nikki and everybody, as you can imagine, the judges cried at these nominations, you know, Stuart, but also many of the others. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing what you've done. I want to hug and congratulate all of you who are here this evening who've been nominated. The winners, the, 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 the people who've been highly, highly commended, but also all those who've been nominated who didn't make it to the final award list. All of you are going to get a certificate. I'll just show you this one. Um, it's going to make its way to you probably sometime next week. Um, mm -hmm. And that includes the people on the long list, because as I said, you really are, uh, are all amazing. But finally, 
Um, we have trophy to give. This is the Linda McEnhill Award trophy, and we only have one of those. So this trophy is awarded the overall award to the person, the nomination of all of these that we've had that we feel is most um, really most deserving and we most want to showcase as outstanding practice. We have added this year's name on the, so that the names are all here. But before I take my thumb off, actually it's your job, Nikki, to announce whose name is on that trophy um, okay. at the back. OK, OK. So this year, the judges have decided that the overall Linda McEnhill Award 2021 goes to Stuart Hassler himself. So this is a posthumous award. His circle of support, as we've just heard, have of course won the award, but we also want to recognise that at the centre of this was Stuart himself and what he achieved in preparing this, talking about it, planning it, organising leaving parties, leaving parties for his staff. It's so inspirational and it has blown everyone away. He is without doubt the deserving winner and Arena will liaise with his team to see who wants to look after this wonderful trophy that Arena can now expose. She can take that finger away. Look oh, at yeah. that. Look at that. Can you see this? Uh, yeah, that's absolutely wonderful. Look after the trophy. So that they're going to see who's going to look after the trophy in his memory. And look at that. That looks beautiful. Beautiful. So really oh. very many congratulations. Thank you, Nikki. And I just wonder, uh, there's lots of you here, but I just wonder, if there, is there anybody here who knew Stuart? I mean, it's unusual for us to give to give the overall award to somebody who wasn't nominated. It was his circle of support who was nominated. But we felt Stuart himself is so inspirational and will inspire many people across the country, people with learning disabilities, but also families and staff professionals, carers, to to be open and to do the best we can. So is there, if there's anybody um, who wants to say something, I see somebody's raising their hand. Anastasia, can you cope with this and find out who that is? Um, yes, that's Chris. Chris, can you please unmute yourself? Oh, hi. Hi, am I live? Have you got me? I think so. I'm not sure we can see. Have you got your camera on, Chris? It's probably yeah, there you are. There you are. Okay, so okay, I this is incredibly touching. I know there's other people in the room. I know Stuart's mum's in the room, um, and I'm really pleased she's with us tonight. And I'm and that she had that time with Stuart at the end was so special. And it's actually, you know, I've been around a while, we're doing this job a bit, and uh, this is probably about as proud as I've ever felt, you know. Um, I think seeing the family get together, seeing Stuart spend time with his nieces and nephews um, was extraordinary. And, and the, I, for me, I really touched Stuart's names going on that because um, he was an incredibly inspiring person. His, his life was challenging and very challenged. He fought so many battles in his 40 odd years. And what he knew he was dying, he gave himself a mission, mm -hmm. a series of missions the Christmas parties, the retirement for his friends, the raising money. Um, every day he woke up with a mission and something to achieve. Um, and I will never forget about five, six days before he passed, I was on the phone to him. And he wanted me to say, to whoever will listen and you count, he knew those were the last few weeks of his life and he wanted them to be the best. And they were some of the best weeks of his life. And seeing his name on that award, is incredibly special. I thank you so much. I thank everybody else in the room, to Mrs. Hassler and Sarah Pope's in the room as well, and Mandy, I see there, and Reedy, this community nurse who left us last year and is off working somewhere else, and I'm glad to see you back in the room as well. Um, it was a privilege to be part of that circle of support, and incredibly proud. And please, someone else put their hands up. I feel like I'm going to go now. I'm going to shut up. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Chris. And I think I can't sort of say enough how much, how touched I am this evening and how touched you were the nominations. And I think it shows, I mean, it shouldn't need saying really, but just how important everybody is and how important people's lives are and therefore how much their deaths also matter to us. 
So thank you for to Stuart Crooked for reminding us of that. And he will re be remembered. His name will be forever on this trophy. His story will be told. All of your stories of people who've been nominated this evening and you know have been showcased here will be remembered and told. So Nikki, do you want to say any final words before I hand back to Gemma, the chair of our network? I'm just so blown away to be part of this evening with you all. And um, it's really quite special to honour those that have lost their lives, but also the people that have supported them in, 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 in a way where, you know, we're looking to the future and what is the best possible support for people with learning disabilities and the best way to they can be supported and so amongst the sadness and I'm an emotional wreck at the moment and tonight's just finished me off but it, you know I mean that with a lot of love because it's also given me a lot of hope for the future you know in my job in news I I do often hear worst case scenarios about um, you know situations particularly facing those people with facing people with learning disabilities um, for what you know in all walks of life really um, so it's just quite lovely it's sad that through death we're hearing about this but it's just so lovely to hear of you know just some excellent examples of how people have dealt with end of life which is just horrific for anyone I mean I can't even comprehend it myself I you know I really can't and so yeah it's, it's a, a beautiful ceremony tonight so honoured to be part of it thank you Arena, and I would love to be part of it again because it was quite beautiful so thank you thank you so much Nikki for, for doing that Gemma shall I just hand over to you for to say a final word before we finish thank you thank you Nikki and thank you Arena. um what an incredible evening um, and it, it'll come to no surprise to anybody that knows me to know that I had to wipe away tears again but it's been such a privilege to share this space with so many inspiring individuals, um, teams, organisations and um, you've just all gone above and beyond and you know for us to be able to celebrate that together is absolutely lovely but you are ensuring that people with learning disabilities are receiving not only equitable access to palliative care but excellent palliative and end of life care as well. So I'm going to leave you with um, a few short words by Dame Cicely Saunders who actually founded the modern hospice movement and she said you matter because you are and you matter to the end of your life. Thank you. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Um, really share it together and be proud um, of who and what you are. Thank you so much for sharing. Ana it. Sorry, Anastasia, are you able to unmute everybody's mics? Because I think I we need to. Did. I just did. If you wish, everyone can just unmute yourselves and make a clap. I think so. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good night.